So let's see that dark transformation in action. Because that is a lot of fun. So I'm just going to spam Death Coil. Get some Scourge Strikes down. There's I got Darth Transformation coming up soon. There we go. And turns into this big old sucker. And I hit Festering Strike to get my... So, so you see all my diseases are going. And I can refresh them anytime I want. I got all these death runes. My ghoul has been transformed. I got a buff that I can use on my allies or on myself. Um, oh, by the way, this um, what I've read is that because this enrage, this unholy frenzy is an enrage ability, you can actually use it on fury warriors, and they gain a, their mastery bonus for it, which is the increased um, damage from enrage effects. So that's pretty cool. See how fast dark transformation came up. Well, they would just spam the heck out of Death Coil. With only three buttons to press, except for the cooldowns, uh, it makes things very interesting. And see, my outbreak's been up for a while, but my diseases are, you know, just now running out, and I can get them punched back up if I wanted to. Okay, let's move on to Blood. Um, this is a little less exciting than Unholy, but uh, the first thing you're going to notice is that Blood Presence has been changed. It's been basically been swapped with Frost Presence. Uh, blood Presence now is just your tanking presence. That's all it is. It's very simple. Um, as far as talents go, a lot of this early stuff you're going to recognize, like Blade Barrier and Bladed Armor and all that. Um, Scarlet Fever is it gives you a demo shout. Your Blood Boil casts demo, demo shout and all the enemies around it. Uh, so that's, of course, pretty useful, but only if the raid doesn't have any warriors or doesn't have anyone else who can provide uh, the equivalent of demo shout. As part of the great talent swap, Bone Shield has been put over to Blood, almost like swapping it with um, Sudden Doom. There's a fun little thing with Blood Parasite. Uh, this is a, just a delightful description. Uh, the Blood Order attacks your enemies, gorging itself with blood until it bursts. But it, the point of that is it actually heals your allies, not just heals yourself. Which is, of course, very nice. Notice that Rune Tap has a 30 second cooldown na natively. Basically, what they did was they just took Rune Tap and improved Rune Tap and combined them into one ability. There's a change to Dancing Rune Weapon. Uh, it causes you to gain 20% extra parry while it's active. So that's pretty nice. And there's one last new talent in blood that's of any importance. Uh, increases the damage dealt by Blood Boil by 40%, so yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, of course, Blood Boil is going to be your main AoE tanking ability. Not your, well, not your main, but it's going to be one of your important ones for sure. The other thing that's very nice is that when you play, Plague Strike a target that is already infected with your Blood Plague, there's a 100% chance that your next Blood Boil will consume uh, no runes. So let me just outbreak it here. Let's say I hit a Plague Strike. And then I gained this Blood Swarm. Your next Blood Boil will consume no runes. There's my Blood Runes. I'm going to hit Blood Boil, and I didn't use any runes. So that's a very, very nice talent, because you are going to be uh, always running short on Blood Runes, and uh, that's um, you definitely want to use that. Uh, remember that since your Festering Strike is it's still useful, but it's not nearly as useful as it was in Unholy. So as a result, you you are going to be using your plague strike to keep your blood your your uh, diseases going a little bit more than you will with unholy. With unholy, you never use icy touch or plague strike ever. You never need to because your festering strike and your outbreak takes care of it. But with blood, you may still need to use your plague strike, or you could just use it just for the extra damage, just to use up an unholy rune, and then you can um, you know hit the blood boil. So that's just a very cool talent. It's very uh, flexible. I really like it. With blood, your mastery is that every time you heal yourself with de with uh, death strike, you gain an absorption shield, um, which is pretty awesome. I mean, obviously that helps your healer a lot. Uh, blood rites: whenever you hit with death strike or obliterate, your frost and holy runes uh, will become death runes when they activate. So uh, using your obliterate gives you extra runes. That's kind of just the same thing as reaping, but uh, but obliterate does a lot more damage than festering strike, uh, but doesn't have the extra ability of refreshing your diseases. So. It just kind of changes up your, your uh, rotation a bit. Okay, next up, let's talk about the Frost Tree. First of all, you gain Frost Strike immediately, so you don't have to wait till all the end of the Talon Tree to get it. Icy Talons also, but it's only for yourself, and you have to spec into improved Icy Talons that are on. Um, blood of the North is very similar to Reaping and Blood Rites, except it works for Blood Strike and Pestilence only. 
and it turns your blood rune into a death rune, um, which is uh, going to make, you know, that way you can actually use it for something that's useful for frost. So it's pretty much, in other words, blood strike spam. Um, and your mastery is really just generic. It just increases your frost damage done. Okay, the first thing you're going to notice is that this tree is built to DPS as either dual wield or two-hander. Now, I'm not sure which is better, because uh, obliterate is a lot stronger with a two-hander, but there's there's some things to be said for dual wielding as well. So I've actually spec dual wielding just for this test, just just because I, I'm a two-hander for the other two. So why not spec dual wielding, right? So uh, let's go over these talents here. Um, Lichborn is the same old self. I just haven't spec in it because because I'm just doing a test dummy uh, build, so it won't do me much good for that. Um, so Nerves of Cold Steel, you remember, used to be farther down the tree. Now it's available for any of these trees, so you could technically go dual wield and grab this talent with these other trees. I'm not sure if you'd want to do that, though. I mean, Scourge Strike, for example, with Unholy is your main source of damage, and that works a lot better with two-handers, so... Uh, and you don't have access to Threat of Thessarian. Uh, while dual wielding your Death Strikes and so on, all those different things have a 100% chance to also deal damage with your offhand weapon, so all of your... Uh, pretty much all these useful abilities are attacking with both weapons. Um, and you don't have that with Unholy, so you can't get like, um, you know, go Unholy and, and get Skirt Strikes to attack with both weapons. So it really tells me that you know, this dual wield talent is not useful for Blood or Unholy. But I could be wrong. I mean, the test down the road may prove otherwise. It just seems like right now uh, that wouldn't be useful. Killing Machine is uh, essentially unchanged. Um, it's still awesome. Uh, it's the, like the most important talent in here practically, and it does proc all the time. Um, also, I want to talk about this dual wield versus two hander. I think I notice a lot more killing machine procs while I'm dual wielding, but I could not. I, I might be wrong. Um, I don't have a working version of proc watch, so I can't really time it. But that's something to be to be looking at in the future when we're looking at raid rotations and all that min maxing and stuff like that. So uh, we will see in the future. Brittle Bones gives you a new disease to put on your target. Uh, when you hit him with Frost Fever, it increases the physical damage taken by 4%. Also gives you a strength bonus. Pillar of Frost has a 1 minute cooldown and a 20 second duration, so you should use it as soon as it comes up because it does give you 20% extra strength. Uh, very simple. It also gives you immunity against knockbacks and stuff like that. And there's an interesting talent, uh, or an interesting glyph, which I'll show you here. This is a weird one. Empowers your Pillar of Frost, making you immune to all effects that cause loss of control of your character, but also freezing you in place while the ability is active. So, you can use that and you will be frozen in place. Eh, I don't know about that. Um, but you can also cancel it, that way you can move again. So you could use the Glyph Pillar of Frost to just purge the abilities and then right-click the cancel, the cancel the spell, or have a cancel R a macro, then you can move, but whatever. Uh, I mean, it's really a PvP talent in that case, but the 20% the strength, that's that's something you want for PvE. Rhyme, of course, is awesome. Your obliterate has 45% chance to cause your next Howling Blast to consume no runes, so you will use that every single time it comes up. Improved Frost Presence. I might as well talk about what Frost Presence actually does now. Um, increases your damage by fit by 10%, plus 5 because of the talent, and, um, and increases your runic power regeneration by 10%. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open with Outbreak, so I can transition straight into an Obliterate. Now I'm going to get rid of these Blood Runes with Blood Strikes, and that's going to turn them into Death Runes, and that, that way I can use them as a resource later. Instead of using um, Festering Strike, what I'm going to do is take advantage of my Free Howling Blasts whenever they come up. Whenever that happens, uh, it'll give me a refresh on my Frost Fever. And then I'll just use Plague Strike to get my uh, Blood Plague up. One of those miss. There it goes. And the reason I'm going to do that instead of using Festering Strike is that uh, Festering Strike still costs blood and frost, and I want to use my blood to turn into um, turn into death runes rather than use them on Festering Strike. And by using uh, Howling Blast and Plague Strike effectively, Outbreak should last me uh, until it until it comes back up, and that way if I do a trouble keeping my diseases up, then I can rely on the crutch of Outbreak, which I'm going to do right now, just to show you. So my final verdict for Frost is that it's still fun, but I find it less intuitive than Unholy. The way Unholy converts all of the other runes into death runes and just uses them all for Scourge Strike is really, really interesting. Um, Unho uh, Frost is still a little extra complicated. I mean, there's not, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of people really would prefer it to be complicated. 
One of the changes the devs want to make to Death Knights is to keep the learning curve uh, a little bit easier to handle for new players, uh, and make it so that you don't have you're not in quite the same pressure to to get a perfect rotation. Uh, with Frost, it's still a little complicated. You still have to alternate correctly between your Howling Blast, Plague Strike, and Blood Strikes, and uh, Obliterates, and um, and Frost Strikes. I mean, that's a lot of stuff compared to Unholy, which is about half that. Okay, well that does it for the Death Knight. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next video.